Hello again. We have here today another item I wanted to show you and something that is connected to what I showed you previously. Um, I mentioned last time that the Kabbalah, as it was print, as it was printed and disseminated, either through print or through manuscript, uh, spread very far and integrated itself in, into many, many different types of communities and all over. And you have such an example with what I have today. I bought this not long ago um, in, from somebody who may have not appreciated what it was. And it is also something hard to appreciate because it appears to be in, in bad condition. It's worn. Um, it has, this was old tape. It has a lot of staining. There's have been insects eating, eating at it. There's no spine, there's no title page, and uh, it really has, as they say, it's worse for wear. So what makes something like that attractive to someone like me who's trying to buy something that represents an important time and an important event in the history of the printing of Hebrew books? The book itself, is a book called Ordinary of, Ordinary of, uh, light, either a light that is made sweet or a light that is assembled. Um, the author of the book is called, it was named Ramosha Cordovero, the Ramak. He wrote a number of works, all of which were very famous uh, in, in their day among the Kabbalists and people who study the Kabbalah. Um, this, this very book was printed rather in conjunction, very close to another one of his books that's famous even to this day and very widespread called Tomer Deborah. So this is the first edition of Ornera, which was printed two years earlier. This was printed in 1587 and Tomer Deborah was printed two years later in 1589 by the very same printer. Uh, this was printed in Venice, Italy, and the printer's name was Giovanni Tagara. And, uh, I believe that they had the same publisher as well, one of his sons, his name was Gedalia. Um, the book begins with a, a sonnet, like the you know, poetry that's written by the editor. The editor, his name is Moshe Basola. There was a famous Moshe Ben Mordechai Basola, who is not this one, but he, he is likely a cousin. Um, and he, he writes a sonnet for the publishing, which is a common occurrence, being that he is the editor, he would put in some kind of input and expression in, into the book itself. But what he does after that is actually more unique in that he writes a sonnet for the content of the volume. So real quick, the content of this, of this book was to illustrate not only the importance of the Kabbalah, but the importance of studying the Kabbalah at this moment, when Rav Moshe Cordovero had uh, compiled and systematized the study of Kabbalah and put it in its rightful place, together with the other studies among the, the, the study of the oral Torah, the Torah Shabbat, and now this, and now the eventual involvement of the study of Nistar, uh, the hidden part of the Torah, which was supposed to go in conjunction uh, with the study of the Torah Shabbat Peh. And he writes about it in this book, starting off saying what a great damage, uh, he calls it a hezek, hezek means damage, that it would be for someone to neglect the study of the Kabbalah and the study of systematized Kabbalah, as was being taught at that moment in history. Um, and then he goes on to say that the great values and, and the great value of studying the Kabbalah itself. And that brings us back to this book and why I bought this specific book. And that is that this is obviously not a, a copy of the book that's in pristine or good, even good condition. Uh, it's a highly used, highly, even some would even say it's degraded. Um, However, taking a closer look, you see that this is actually what Ramosha Cordovero, the Ramak, this is actually what he asks of the learner. He asks that it be studied, 
that it be developed in the minds and, and in the literature of the Jewish people starting at the, the 16th century, the 1500s, and evolving later on, something which actually happened and came about. Ramosha Kodavero lived in Safed and Safat in, in the northern Israel, and he was the founder of the yeshiva of Kabbalists that legend says it was on the day he died, uh, the Ari, or I, Yitzchak Luria, moved in and took over there uh, at, in 1570, in that year. He passed away in 1570, and his work continued in the work of the Ari and all, the, all of the Kabbalists of his time and his place, which was disseminated probably through printing, a uh, large part through printing, after that, during the later 16th century, 17th century, and so on. And you see an example of that in this book. First of all, there are um, writing, there is, there is writing in the book, uh, including what it says on the top, say fair or narrow, just to indicate what the book is, because the title page had fallen off, may have become scrap paper, may have become the binding, which will destroy it. And as you go through, you see what, what are called readership marks. Readership marks are when people who are reading the book see a passage or a line that they like. They put a mark on the side, which only they really, really know, and uh, for them to return to and to quickly access what they want to take away. There are a number of interesting readership marks throughout this book, and that is a, that's a very rare thing. Uh, to find not only in any, not only in a rabbinic text, but in a Kabbalistic text. I haven't seen very many of that. And when I saw that, I knew that this is something important. So moving in to the book, for example, I have one that is four lines in a lower diagonal, uh, moving down. And then moving forward, I have one that's just a circle. And then moving forward, I have six lines that are in a diagonal the opposite way, and so on. These are just examples of the different ownership marks, readership marks in, in this book. And that struck me as I saw it, that this is actually the will of Moshe Cordovero, the Ramak, in his studying of the Kabbalah, that it be studied closely and in depth not read quickly and not gone over, but actually really closely studied. There's something else in this volume that I found to be very interesting and in, in um, a different hand from the hand that made those readership marks. That hand had also did some, uh, extra, some extra words or expl explanatory words on the side. Um, there were some missing pages in uh, the index and um, these pages were written in in a hand in these manuscript leaves, which uh, were, I can tell from the paper and from the script, that this is the late 1600s, the early 1700s. Um, and uh, it was likely in Italy or uh, maybe North Africa, possibly. Um, as it was somebody who was acquainted with both the Italian script and the North African script, which are different but have merged often in the past, especially at this time. So in summary, um, I'm giving a history of the Kabbalah and you can of, of this period, and you can see it through this volume, but you also see another element of collecting Hebrew books, which is different from the generally accepted practice of collecting really fine copies in which you see very little evidence of people reading and learning and studying them. But if you see actual quotations taken out of a book in some kind of systematized form, as you see it in these readership marks, then that's really exceptional in producing a, a visual history of what actually occurred at this time.